Michael, parapsychology, ESP, forget the stuff you see on television all the time, but there are legitimate scientists who believe that some non-physical aspects of the world can be demonstrated, either anecdotally or experimentally. What do you think about the capacity of parapsychology, if it is real in any way, to elucidate a, an, an existence of a non-physical reality? Well, one issue that arises, Robert, is whether it would give you grounds for believing in a non-physical reality. I mean, the alternative is that uh, there might just be more things to speak in the physics of the future than are present in physics today. So, I mean, it could be, for example, that there's some physical mechanism that allows to speak telepathic communication between individuals, right? And so I don't think that uh, uh, on its own that uh, if you had an experimental demonstration of the reality of telepathy, right, that that would give you grounds for concluding, for example, that we are really immaterial minds or souls, or there was some sort of immaterial medium, right? Yeah, I agree on telepathy. Uh -huh. But when I get to something like clairvoyance, where mm -hmm. I am, uh, well, not I, because I can't, I can't do this stuff, by the way, <laughs> but other people claim to see the future or to have a sense of what will happen at a, at a, at a time that has no temporal connection. Once you get independent of time, you're really moving outside of, of uh, our understanding of current uh, of, of physics uh, uh, in, in the most contemporary sense. That's absolutely right. I mean, if you, uh, if you imagine, for example, that someone has the ability to see the future and so on, right? And one of the things that involves is that it looks like there must be backward causation ranging from that later event back into the mind of the medium, et cetera. Or either backward causation or that time itself is, uh, exists in another realm and there's a spiritual realm that sees uh, our four-dimensional universe as a block and in another dimension and there's a spirit beings or God or whatever that can see it in a different way. Oh, right. Well, the thing is that, um, I mean, there are two ways you can approach this sort of thing. You can ask, you know, have there been any well-designed experiments, so to speak, that have led to uh, the conclusion that there are these paranormal powers, telepathy, precognition, uh, psychokinetic powers, and so on, right? Uh, in the case of psychokinesis and uh, uh, precognition, I think there are no incredible experiments at all. In the case of telepathy, some scientists claim that there are, others that there aren't. I'm inclined to be skeptical on it, right? So uh, things may be a bit up in the air still with regard to, to telepathy, but I'm, I'm skeptical in that matter. Uh, the other old thing is that people have experiences that lead them to believe that there are paranormal powers. Yeah, but I'm not interested in what people think. I okay. mean, I'm interested in a reality. I mean, this is not a subjective question uh, in terms of their own personal psychology. They can work out their hang-ups on their own. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in what parapsychology may tell us truly about the nature of reality. Right. And uh, let me ask it this way is that if you were convinced that a precognition experiment was real, even, st even by statistical, uh, a small statistical amount, that it was regularly and statistically variable, that there was some aspect of precognition, i.e. knowing the future, right. what do you then say? Well, I think that uh, it's going to be very difficult to fit that into physics, even the revised physics and so on, uh, because, I mean, physics tends to work in terms of forces, for example, acting upon, you know, small bits of stuff, okay, right? Whereas in the case of precognition, it seems to be a very selective sort of thing. So it's, it wouldn't just be that, you know, events happening in the future have some sort of physical effects, okay, right? But there would be sort of patterns, right, that would be producing patterns earlier on. And, and so, an enormous number of things ha have to happen. Yes, right. And so uh, I think that it would, it would require uh, quite a radical revision in our conception of the world. And if it were fit into physics, I think that physics would need to be radically revised. But that, I think, of course, is a reason for thinking that it's not likely to occur. Would that possibly indicate, again, I'm, I'm, I'm forcing you to make yes. the presupposition that there is some kinds of precognition exper experiments that would be true. Would that force you to reconsider the possible existence of a world that is not part of our physical world? In other words, a world that, that has to be conceptualized, that cannot be a revision to our physical way of thinking. Yeah, well, I don't want to say it would give us any reason to think there's anything outside of the natural world, okay? But it would require a revision in our conception of the natural world, I think. At least it would be, I think that would be the natural way to go. 
And so I think you, there'd be reason for postulating uh, things that did not conform to the general patterns of physical laws, for example. But, but I think what you'd be doing in that case is you're just, just enlarging your definition of the natural world to include anything that's real. Well, I want, no, I want to include <laughs> anything. I mean, I mean, the, I'm thinking of the spatial temporal realm, okay, right? But and, this is independent now of the spatial temporal realm. Well, it may be. I mean, look, it's like this. If you, if you imagine that people had immaterial minds, okay, uh, that would be something quite independent of the physical stuff, okay? Right. But it would still be located in the spatial, temporal, physical realm, okay, right? And so... Maybe. Yeah, I agree, it'd be up for grabs. Yeah. But I think that the, the natural thing would just be to think that there are these additional forces or new entities, okay, right, which are present in the total spatial, temporal realm and that causally connect up to the, the stuff of physics, basically. Even backwards, yeah. Yes. So you're really wedded to this spatial, temporal place being all there is. Well, I mean, it's, it's not that it's necessary that it's all there is. There could be other things and so on, but I just don't think there's any, any, any evidence for uh, intervention from without. I mean, for example, Houdini was very interested in, in spiritualism, and uh, he wanted to perform an experiment, an attempt to transmit a code back after he died and so on, right? And uh, if there were a spiritual realm and so on inhabited by, you know, disembodied souls, etc., then you might think it's rather likely that they could have some sort of effect upon uh, the physical world, but no one's ever succeeded in, uh, in transmitting a message from beyond the grave so far.